How's it going everybody? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about dynamic search ads. By the end of this video, you will understand everything you need to know about dynamic search ads, including what they are and how to use them. And at the very end, I will be going over the pros and cons of using dynamic search ads and when I use them and when I don't. So starting off from the very beginning, I do want to talk a little bit about what dynamic search ads are, of course, before I start teaching you about how to use them. So here we have this handy dandy little chart, if you will, and this is a basic structure of a Google Ads campaign. Now, chances are, if you're new to Google Ads, you're, you're somewhat familiar with this, um, uh, this structure on the left. Essentially, you have a campaign, and inside of that campaign, you have a standard ad group, and inside of that ad group, you're, the targeting that you use is based on keywords, and those keywords run to, uh, and inside of that ad group, you have a responsive search ad, or maybe a couple of them inside of there. Now, um, what we're going to be talking about is a different type of ad group called a dynamic ad group. And and in a dynamic ad group, instead of targeting based on keywords, you're actually targeting based on content that Google finds on your site or that you give Google through a, a data feed. And as you can see here, based off that data, Google dynamically creates search ads for you that you can use inside of your Google campaigns. So that's a little high level overview of what a dynamic search ad is. It's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's basically giving Google data and they go through and dynamically create ads and show different ads to users based on the data that they have on those users. So now that we have that kind of out of the way, let's actually go through and talk about how to create these dynamic search ads and when to use them. So we're gonna come over here to our Google Ads account now. First thing you will need to do is create a Google Ads account. And from here, you can go through and click on the plus button. We're gonna to go to new campaign and we can you can select any, you can select sales or, or leads. For this one, we're going to do sales and we're going to uh, leave that there as that conversion action goal. And here you want to click on search. And this is where you are going to want to go in and add your website. For us, we are going to be using um, this e-commerce website that I have called Mozo House as an example today for these dynamic search ads. So we're gonna add that there. We're going to call this DSA Mozo House. And then now uh, you can hit go through and hit continue. And then here you can go through and add your budgets. And, and up to this point, you'll probably notice that the settings are the exact same so far if you're going to create a standard ad group and a normal ad group, but I'm gonna show you where it gets different here in a minute. So we're gonna give this a budget just of $20 a day. We're going to optimize towards conversions. And then here we want this to be, uh, the ad rotation to be uh, best performing ads, but we're gonna hit next here. We're gonna opt out of both of these. We'll just say that we're targeting the United States. And by the way, as I'm going through these, these uh, settings really quickly, if you aren't familiar with these settings, check out this video up above the full hour on how to learn Google ads. For this one, I just want to get right to the dynamic search ads. So here we are, and this is where you can set up your dynamic search ads if you're creating a brand new campaign. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to just go straight to creating a new dynamic ad group inside of your campaign if you already have existing campaigns. But here we can click on this little button and now we can go through and create dynamic search ads. It's going to ask for our domain, so we're going to enter that in for whatever we're gonna be targeting for us. It is going to be mozohouse.com, and we want this to be English. And you're gonna notice here that uh, it's going to ask us to select a targeting source. Now, there are three different targeting sources inside of here. There is use Google's index of my website. There's use URLs from my page feed only, and then use URLs from both Google's index of my website and my page feed. Now, for this ad group, we're going to keep it simple and go with the easiest route, and that is to use Google's index of my website. We'll come back later, and I'll show you how to use this, the Google index and a page page feed. And as you see, I've gone through and created a page feed. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But for this one, we're going to come with use Google's index of my website. You can click in here to more settings and you can set a uh, start date and an ad schedule and campaign URLs. I like all the settings as they are now. And we're going to hit next. And that brings us here to this dynamic ad group where you'll notice there are three different options for targeting. Now, if we recall, if we go back over to our Google ads campaign structure, typically this is the section where you would go through and add target keywords. But remember, because we are doing a dynamic ad group here, we are going to do targeting based off of content from our website or from the feed. And then this is where we can go through and set that up. So as you can see here, there are a couple different options. The first one is to target based off of categories recommended from your website. So if we click inside of here, Google will go through and um, 
Google will go through and crawl your website and automatically pick categories that it could go through and target. So as you can see here, one of the ones that it's pulling from mine is bedding, um, duvet covers, bed, bed linens. Um, and then we scroll down, we have like bath, bath mats, bath accessories, bath rugs. You kind of get the idea, right? And it gives you an idea of the search volume. So say that I wanted to target anything that was related to bedding on my website. Basically, it would go through and make ads to any of the pages that have content about bedding on my website. When you are using recommended categories from Google, I don't don't recommend going through and creating the same or go through and adding multiple categories to the same ad group. What I mean by that is if I was to go through and create this campaign, I wouldn't want to uh, in this ad group have both targeting bed and bath accessories because chances are those accessories aren't going to necessarily mix and not and the targeting and the headlines and the descriptions won't really match if it's someone searching for bathrooms versus bedding. So in this case, if you were wanting to create a ad group for bedding specifically, I would only target the bedding category and then I would name this, you know, our bedding ad group. And then I would come back after and go, go through and create one for the bath category and then one for the kitchen category or wh however your website may be broken out into essentially. So that is the first way to go through and target somebody with dynamic search ads. The second way that I wanna go over is by targeting a specific web page. Now say I wanted to target a specific URL, I could come into my website and I could grab one of the products here and I could say, yep, target this specific product as it comes through and clicks inside of here. And then I can go through and add that specific URL inside of there. And I'm gonna exit out of this um, recommended category because I, I don't recommend mixing these two. Either go with just the recommended either go with the categories or with the web page targeting. Now, another thing that you can do if you want to take a more broad approach is you can do, you can create specific rules to ba based on web page targeting. Here, this is just targeting the URL equals, but say that for this, for my website, for instance, everything that's in the kitchen feed, you'll notice here that in the URL, it says kitchen. So if we come back, if we go back and then I also come to this product right here, which is in my kitchen feed, I also have a uh, URL contains kitchen as well. So I could come over here and I could say, I want to target any of the URLs that contain the keyword um, kitchen and add that inside of there. Oops, and I gotta come over here to create rule base. So URL contains, and then I want this to be kitchen and then go through and add that. And the third option for targeting for your dynamic search ads here is the all web pages. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is kind of the lazy method when it comes to Google ads. If you wanted to just get a campaign out there and target everything on your website, you could do that. However, I don't recommend this option because it can waste a lot of ad spend very quickly. So I don't recommend that option. So let's just carry on like we wanted to target the, the specific, any, I wanna target any categories inside of here that are basically in my kitchen product collection. So we're gonna come over to our search campaign. We're gonna keep this in the URL contains that. And then now we are to the dynamic search ad portion. And if you call over here for a standard ad group, typically you are creating a search responsive search ads, but here we are going to be creating dynamic search ads. And if you're familiar with responsive search ads, it's a little bit different here. You're gonna notice that the final URL dynamically is generated based on the landing page and the user search query. And then we have dynamically generated headlines and display URLs. The only thing that you have control over with these dynamic search ads is the descriptions themselves. So I'm gonna go through and write a 90 character, 90 character or less description for our uh, kitchen, a pro kitchen products. So there we have a couple of descriptions that have been added and we're going to hit done here. And you're gonna notice it's going to give you the option to go through and add a dynamic search ad. I do recommend coming through here and actually going through and creating at least two to three dynamic search ads per ad group. Go through and add different descriptions so Google has more to test. For the purpose of this tutorial though, we're just gonna hit cancel here and go and hit next. We're now going to be asked to go through and add a couple of different site links. So I'm gonna go through and add some site links here real quick. Basically for this, it makes it really easy because I want to do um, one for accessories. I'm gonna grab this here. So I'm gonna go through and add these site links here real quick. So now we have a few different site link extensions added inside of here. And once again, I know I'm kind of breezing through these, but I do cover this in my full one hour Google ads course, if you wanted to check that out up above. And so here, now we have our site links and save that. And as you can see, there are lots of different extensions that you can go through and add as well, based depending on your business. I don't recommend going through, probably depending on your business, you don't need to go through and add all of these, but go through and add the ones that are applicable. For now, we're going to go through and hit next. And that is going to take us to a final page where you can go through and review your settings. And then we're gonna come down here and hit publish campaign 
campaign. And you're going to notice here that I'm getting this error that's saying your campaign will not serve additional information is needed. If we go back, you're going to notice it's giving me this weird error saying ad group with no keywords. I have noticed this happens pretty often with your dynamic search ads. If this happens to you, I recommend either just publishing the campaign or going through and refreshing until you don't get this error. Just something to be aware of. Um, I want to make sure that you are aware of that. I don't know why it does this sometimes with the Google uh, dynamic search ads, but we're going to go through and hit publish and uh, publish anyways, basically. And that will bring you to a view that looks something along the lines of this. And now if you wanted to go back and create a, another dynamic search ad, ad group, essentially, we have our first one here for kitchen. Let's say we want to now go back and do one for bathrooms. We can click inside of here into this ad group. And now you're going to notice in this top left-hand corner, ad group type, it has standard. We want to change this to dynamic. Go ahead and hit continue. And here is where you can go through and create a second ad group. Say that this one, we wanted it to be our bathroom targeting. You go through and do the bathroom targeting here and follow the processes process basically from there. Now I do want to take a step back and go to the settings on and show you how to upload a page feed in case you want to do targeting that way real quick. So let's jump over to that section. Now, as I mentioned, I did want to go through and show you how to use a page feed targeting in case you wanted to go that route. So this is for if you want to use URLs from a page feed only, or you wanted to use URLs from both index and website page feed. And as you can see here, I have this little option. You have to go through and create this inside of your account. I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you come over to this URL, I'll leave a link to it down below. This gives you a template, a Google sheet template that you can go through and download. And once you cut through and click this little tab right here, it will create something that looks like this for you to go through and create your page feed. Now, as you can see here inside the page feed, it's really simple to create. All you need to go do is go through and add your page URL, and then you can come through and add a custom label for targeting. What that looks like you can see here is you have category and then underscore page equals shoes, or you could have a single product or a state, or if you're like a hotel or a good or service essentially. What this looks like as an example for my store, here's one that I've gone through and filled out. You can see here I have the URLs and then I have the category page underscore equals bath. So you can see here, here's all of my bath URLs and here is the product category. They all contain bath. Where this becomes powerful is if you have products that are mixed and matched and you want to target those in specific ad groups. For example, I have this product right here, which is a vase that goes in my vase category and all the URLs contain vase, but say that it also could go with a kitchen product. I can then go through and add the category vase and then a semicolon kitchen. And same with this one down here, which is a, a kitchen product, but it can also be hung on the wall. So I have it here under kitchen and then underscore wall. So now we can go back over to our Google ads account and you're going to notice there's this little page feed drop down. You will have to upload this into your Google ads account for it to show up in this little drop down like you see here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So once we click in there, we'll hit next. And then from here, you can go through and add, you can target based on your custom label. So say that I wanted to target the feed based on this specific category page equals bath. I can now go through and do that. Or I can go through and do one that contains wall and bath, whatever it may be. So this gives you an opportunity to have more customization over your dynamic search ads. It's a little bit more of an advanced feature. So I don't recommend jumping right into it. And if you're new to dynamic search ads, it may be better to just use the ones that Google provides you. But I do want to make sure that you know that that is an option. Now, if you do want to upload this um, product feed into your Google ads account so that you can use it, you will need to come in here before you go through and create your account and hit on this tools right here. And then we want to go to business data. And then as you see here, I have this page feed, but you're going to, want to go through and add a new page feed. You want this to be page feed. And then you can go through and name this uh, what you want. So we're going to call this Mozo2. Uh, then we want to select a source. You can upload a, I like to use Google Sheets. And then you're going to notice here, this is an important step. You have to give this Google Sheets permission to your account. So what you want to do is go through and copy this URL right here. Go to your Google Sheets, go to share. And then as you can see here inside of this one, I already gave Google permission, but you have to go through and add the, this, this email as an editor. So if in this case we would go through and copy in that uh, email, add them as an editor and send that over and then share anyways. And then we can come back over to the data feed and then hit apply. Now, because I already gone through and uh, submitted this one, it's not going to let me go through and do it, but that's how you would do it for this specific, or that's how you'd go through and upload your page feed. Now I do want to wrap up on talking about the pros and cons of dynamic search search ads and when you may use them. Cause after watching this, you may be thinking, why would I never, why would I ever use just normal responsive, uh, ads essentially? So let's go back over 
to our handy dandy uh, sheet here. And here are the pros and cons. So the pros of using dynamic search ads is less time doing keyword research. As you saw, we didn't have to do any keyword research and Google is basically gonna go through and do that targeting for us. Ad creation is a lot faster and the actually, actually creating the whole campaign is a lot easier when it comes to dynamic search ads. Now the cons are is as I move my head, now the cons you can see here is you don't have full control over the targeting um, and there's no understanding of the best performing headlines because as you saw, Google dynamically creates those headlines and sometimes they may not match the same language that you're using in the descriptions. And also it is easy to waste spend on irrelevant search terms because Google's basically doing your targeting. They have all the control on what that may look like. Now, uh, so in, when you compare that to the pros and cons of a responsive search ad or a standard ad group, the pros are more control over your targeting more control over your messaging, better insights into what is working. But the cons there are it's just more work basically to go through and manage those. Uh, ads take longer to go through and create. And also you might miss out on traffic that you haven't identified or you've missed in your keyword research. So take the pros and cons for what they may be. Me personally, I like to test both dynamic search ads and, and standard ad groups when I'm running a new campaign. I think both of them have places in the Google ads ecosystem and both of them are handy in certain situations. So take that for what it's worth. Hopefully you found this video helpful. That's everything that I have for you today. Like I said, if you want to learn more about Google ads, I recommend checking out this video right here and we'll see you in the next one.